For today's flip notes, we're going to review the idea of density. Um, and so in terms of density, we have a couple variables. One is mass, the amount of matter in an object, and one is volume, which is the amount of space an object occupies. And when we put them together to solve for density, it's mass per unit volume, um, or mass divided by volume. One other fact that you'll need that'll help you for analyzing your lab is percent error. And percent error, the formula is um, the absolute value, that's what these slashed lines mean, of the actual answer minus the experimental answer. So you do that subtraction first, then divide it by the actual answer, and multiply the whole thing by 100. And it gives you a percentage. Percent error is sort of, um, if you had 0% error, you would have been perfect and none of it wrong. Um, if you have 10% error, you know, we grade the other way for tests, so that would be sort of like getting a 90 on a test. Um, I won't take points off for your percent error, but I will take points off if you don't show me that you've calculated it. Um, some labs in chemistry do have a pretty large percent error. It's just the nature of them. So let's look at density real quick. The formula for density is D equals M divided by V. So what is the density of an object with a mass of 7.65 grams and a volume of 4.5 milliliters? Well, we'll use our equation. D equals M over V, and then I'll substitute in 7.65 grams over 4.5 milliliters, which is equal to 1.7 grams per milliliter. Notice my significant figures. This is a division problem. 4.5 has two significant figures, so therefore my answer must also have two significant figures. Now, factor labeling and dimensional analysis. I'm going to ask, I'm going to require that you solve these problems the way that I'm teaching you. Um, it's not because I don't believe that you can sort of do it intuitively, because I know that you can. But this is setting us up for many, many, many skills in chemistry. So you will be required to do the problems the way that I'm showing you how to do them now, because it's going to translate into several other chemistry concepts. So once the chemistry gets difficult, we can fall back on this dimensional analysis, because we'll all be doing it the same way. It really, really does help. So if we're going to convert 3.1 miles to kilometers, and I've given you two of the conversions, I also will provide you with some of the um, conversions, and you'll see on your um, worksheets what list of them you get. But basic metric ones, 1,000 meters in a kilometer, um, 100 centimeters in a meter, those basic metric ones I do expect you to know. So we're going to start with what we're given. It's 3 point, sorry about that. It is, let's see, I haven't learned how to erase on this tablet, so we'll do 3.1 miles. And if it helps you, and this part isn't required, but to put it over 1, it helps keep all of your things organized. And then a multiplication sign and a um, line, because what we're going to do is if our unit is miles here, we're going to put miles in the denominator, and we're going to convert it to something. Um, in this case, I have a conversion from miles to feet, so I have that one mile is 5,280 feet. Now my units for miles are gone, but I'm left with feet. Feet isn't what I want. I want to solve for kilometers, so I'm going to put feet on the bottom. I can convert feet into inches. One foot is 12 inches. And now my feet, the unit for feet, is canceled out. It doesn't matter how many steps it takes you to do the problem. As long as your units work out, your answer will be fine in the end. Inches isn't what we want, so I'm going to put inches down here on the bottom. And we need to start getting to metric. And I do have a conversion between inches and centimeters. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. My inches are now gone. I don't want centimeters as my answer, so I'm going to put it in the denominator. And something I can convert centimeters to, I'm trying to get to kilometers. And I might know how many centimeters are in a, in a kilometer, but I personally don't. But I do know how many centimeters are in a meter. I know that one meter has 100 centimeters. 
And then if I'm trying to get rid of um, meters, I'm going to put meters on the bottom. And I'm going to convert that to kilometers. One kilometer is 1,000 meters. And now my final unit is kilometers, and that's perfect because that's what I want. When I go to calculate this, um, it does help some people to multiply this times this times this times this times this and make a number that's the top, and multiply this times this times this and get the bottom, and then divide. Um, you do want to take the time to punch this into your calculator because very, very often people calculate it wrong, um, and it's an, an entering mistake. If you are having that problem, please see me. I, have, I don't count significant figures for any of my calculations because these are all considered to be exact. So even though this is a one and one significant figure, when it, things are considered to be exact, they don't contribute to significant figures. So always in these problems, I just go back to my question. My question has two significant figures, so my answer then also must have two significant figures. Let's try one more. 3.3 pounds to grams. I'm going to start with my 3.3 pounds, put it over 1. I have a conversion between pounds and kilograms, so I'm going to put my pounds on the bottom, my kilograms on the top. Um, 1 kilogram is 2.2 pounds, goodbye pounds. And I want to get to grams. This is a basic one that we should know. Kilograms on the bottom, grams on the top. There are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. I go to solve, I multiply the top. I multiply the bottom, and then I divide. I have two significant figures here, so I end up with 1,500 grams. And finally, we're going to try one more. And what I suggest that you do is I suggest that you pause and try to solve this yourself. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can do it, and then you can follow along to check. Okay, let's see if you got it. We have 8.00 kilometers. I want to get rid of kilometers. And again, I can put that over one. So I'm going to put kilometers on the bottom. And I'm going to put meters on top. One kilometer is 1,000 meters. Goodbye kilometers. I don't want meters. I'm going to put meters on the bottom. Put centimeters on the top. One meter equals 100 centimeters. Goodbye meters. Centimeter, I don't want that, so centimeter goes on the bottom. I'm going to use my conversions from before, so I know inches to centimeters. I know one inch is 2.54 centimeters. I know my inches goes on the bottom, and we're going to convert to feet. One foot has 12 inches. That's going to go. I'm going to put feet on the bottom. I'm going to use my conversion from before. I know that one mile is 5,280 feet. Again, my feet get canceled out. Multiply everything on the top, and then multiply everything on the bottom. Write those two numbers down. Divide. I have three significant figures here, so I'm going to have 4.97 miles as my answer. And then we just have a couple terms that I want you to get into your notes. Um, you might have this from the other lab, but it's more spelled out here. A chemical reaction is a change in which one or more substances are changed into one or more new substances. So one or more substances are changed into one or more new substances. And that's exactly what we did with the copper chloride and aluminum lab. We also learned about the reactants, which are the starting substances in a chemical reaction. And we also learned about products which are the substances that are produced as a result of a chemical change. And we labeled all those in when we talked about the lab. Um, but I wanted to make sure you formally had them in your notes so that they would be um, available and ready for you to study um, when it comes time for our first unit test.